Hey, good morning, church. It's good to have you with us this morning. We're back in morning devotions. Uh, man, I hope you had a great weekend. I hope things went smooth for you and everybody is healthy in your family. Everybody's doing good here at church. Everybody's good in my family. Uh, so that's a good thing. And um, love being in worship with our church family yesterday, just being encouraged by uh, just singing uh, praises to God and just worship and just that it was a good day to be with God's people. And uh, so if you were able to be with us, it was good seeing you. If you were online, um, uh, we appreciate you joining as well and appreciate uh, our church family and just the encouragement we receive from being with one another. Uh, a couple of uh, announcements real quick this morning before we get going with uh, our time in God's Word. And that is that, uh, just let me remind you that tomorrow morning, we have our opportunity to go serve at Eustis Elementary School. Uh, so our partnership with Eustis Elementary School has lasted, I don't know, the last several years where we have been partnering with them to just be a blessing to them and an encouragement to them and to their faculty and staff. And uh, So if you have been with Lake Eustis for any amount of time, you know that last year we um, adopted teachers and we... Um, so families adopted uh, teachers from the school and administrative roles in the school. We send encouraging notes and some snacks and some treats every once in a while and just let them know that we're praying for them and we're encouraging them and the work they do. Uh, we've also done numerous events with them. Um, we're, we've done some food things. We've done some activity things. And um, one of the things we've done every year for a long time is done a breakfast for their teachers and staff uh, on their pre-planning week. And so uh, teachers are, are back today, um, and, uh, and some of them were back last week too, but their whole faculty and staff will be there tomorrow morning. And um, so we have been invited by the school to come back and do breakfast for them. And so we're doing pancakes and sausage and fruit tomorrow. And um, we would love to have your help if you're able to. Uh, we're gonna be meeting at the school at 6.45 a.m and uh, teachers are going to arrive sometime in that eight o'clock range somewhere around there and we want to have all the food ready for them and prepared so if you're able to help we would love to have you come and join us um, if you do come we're going to ask you to bring a mask if you have one if you don't have one we'll have some available for you to use we'll have gloves there as well just trying to be courteous to the staff and the faculty there uh, and their procedures that they have there at the school and um, so if you would do that, it'd be much appreciated, uh, much, much appreciated. Uh, we, uh, unfortunately, we can't do it without having masks. Um, so we're just doing that. So um, out of courtesy for them, please make sure you do that. Um, also want to remind you, uh, if you are going to come and do that tomorrow morning, would you just shoot us an email? Uh, give us a call here at the office. You can comment on this. Uh, on this video if you plan to come uh, and let us know because I'd like to have a number and make sure we got enough people to help with that. Um, and uh, then also want to mention that we have our midweek Bible studies that we started last week and even though we're not meeting in person, um, we are doing that digitally and online. And so on Wednesday nights we have our uh, elementary age kids from six to seven and then on uh, Wednesday also we have our middle school and high school from 7 to 8 and then adults if you're an adult and are wanting the online Bible study that is on Thursday night from 7 to 8 o'clock on our Facebook page and our YouTube page I'm hoping and praying that maybe um, sometime soon maybe even September we can get back into the flow of things uh, for classes and uh, Bible studies in person and hopefully that will take place but we'll see um, we'll just see what the next couple of weeks, um, uh, where they take us and we'll go from there. So a lot of things happening. Be involved in those things if you, if you can. Uh, today we're going to be back in God's word, looking at another one of the old Testament Bible characters. So we started this last week where we are looking at different characters of the old Testament that teach us things and encourage us. And, um, just, we find great blessing from them. And some of the things we're going to learn and we have learned, um, are based off of, man, their triumph and their success and what they did really, really well. Um, and we can be encouraged by that and learn from that. And then there's some other characters in the Old Testament that we're going to learn about what not to do. Uh, this is not the right way to live. This is not 
uh, appropriate behavior, and God will teach us those things as well. And so we want to be encouraged in that. Uh, today we'll see a little bit of a mixture of that in uh, a gentleman in the Old Testament that kind of started off on the wrong foot, but then got it together as he went along and was obedient to the Lord's uh, guidance. So um, this morning's uh, text is from the book of Second Kings. So this is all the way back in the Old Testament. Uh, and the book of Second Kings chapter 5 is where we're going to be at. And just to give you a little bit of a, uh, I don't know, background into the story as we lead into the story, let me tell you what has gone on. So in this time period, there was a man by the name of Naaman. Naaman was a general in the Aram army, um, Aram army. Uh, very powerful man, very successful man, businessman, just a a type leader, uh, just that kind of guy. Very successful in his career. He had one big issue though, and that is that he developed a skin disease. The Bible talks about it being leprosy. Um, it was some kind of skin disease. Um, evidently, it wasn't to the degree that he was quarantined um, away from people, but it was definitely leprous, and, or definitely some kind of skin condition that was debilitating to him. And obviously, he had tried to figure out solutions to it and get people to help him. Well, word gets out somehow. He finds out that there is a prophet in um, near Israel that uh, has the potential to heal people. And so he hears about that, and he decides, uh, I'd like to maybe venture over there and see if I can find out about this. Uh, he did not belong to the faith that we would hold to. Um, he lived in a polytheistic society where they worshiped other false gods, but he decides, hey, if this guy can heal me, I'll take the chance. So he talks to his king, gets permission to go to, um, uh, actually it's a little bit north of Israel, it's uh, Samaria, that's where uh, this man Elisha the prophet was, and he goes to see Elisha the prophet to get possible healing from him. So when he goes, he brings all this money, he brings all these gifts to give Elisha to, I don't know, pay him for his services and or bribe him into helping him. And he gets there and he finally gets to Elisha's house. And the interesting part is he gets to Elisha's house and Elisha never even comes out. Like Elisha hears that he's there and Elisha sends a messenger to him. Elisha sends a messenger out to him and gives him the message that he needs to hear. But Elisha never goes out. That's a weird dynamic. Now I'd be a little bit rubbed wrong too if I traveled all that distance and the dude don't even come out to see me, right? I might get a little frustrated too. But uh, the story goes that Elisha sends out a messenger, and this is what the messenger has to say. And so in 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 10, let's read the rest of the story, and we'll make some points about it. In verse 10, it says, Elisha sent a messenger to say to him, so he's telling Naaman, Go wash yourself seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will be restored, and you will be cleansed. Verse 11, But Naaman went away angry, and he said, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of his, the Lord his God and wave his hand over the spot and cure me of my leprosy. Are not Abana and Farpar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Couldn't I wash in them and be cleansed? So he turned and went off in a rage. Verse 13, Naaman's servants went to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do some great thing, would you not have done it? How much more then when he tells you, wash and be cleansed? So he went down and he dipped himself in the Jordan seven times. And as the man of God had told him, uh, as the man of God had told him, and his flesh was restored and became clean like that of a young boy. I just love this story. It teaches us a couple of different things here. One of the things that it teaches us as we read and look at this story is that God doesn't always answer our prayers or our requests quite the way we want them. Uh, I don't know if you've ever noticed that before, but when we pray to the Father, not always do we get the answer we desire. Not always do we get the solution that we think would be fitting. We often do that with God, don't we? We often come to God and say, God, here is my situation. Uh, by the way, God, let me tell you how it'd be best if you fix this, right? Uh, we say that kind of stuff all the time, and, and we kind of we kind of cavalierly say, but if it's your will, but really what we many times want to do is we want to tell God, here's the problem, here's how you should fix it, and here's the timeline, God, in which we need you to fix it. 
And the problem is, so often, God doesn't work on that timetable, right? God doesn't choose to do it our way. Uh, Elisha, um, it doesn't even come out to see him. Uh, Naaman wanted him some big ceremony, right? Naaman said, hey, come out and wave your hand over me, pray, call on the name of your God. I wanted some ceremony, but he didn't get the answer that he really wanted to get. We also see that anger sometimes flows from when that happens. When we don't get what we want from the Lord, when we don't get the right answer, or at least the answer in the right time period, we tend to get frustrated with God. And we fight against that because we, we fight against that, and we should fight against those tendencies to get angry because we never make good decisions in our anger, right? Well, very rarely do we make good decisions in our anger. And that was the case with Naaman. Naaman had traveled all the way over to see Elisha. Elisha tells him exactly what to do. And because it didn't fit what what Naaman wanted, Naaman's ready to just leave and go home. Like, and not even listen to the prophet that told him what to do. He is so angry about that. Another key thing we see from this story is that obedience really is the key. Um, and I would say obedience, even though or it's especially when it doesn't make sense. I mean, this made no sense to Naaman, right? He made no, it made no sense to, to Naaman. In the Jewish culture, the Jewish or the Jordan River was a big deal, right? There's a lot of big things that took place in and around the Jordan River. I mean, there's just lots of stuff. You got uh, the, the crossing of the uh, Jordan River miraculously by the Israelites coming into the new land. Uh, when Jesus shows up in the New Testament, we see John the Baptist baptizing there. That's where Jesus was baptized. There's a lot of stuff that goes on near the Jordan River. It's a pretty critical river in Jewish culture and Jewish tradition. Um, but for most outsiders, the Jordan River was not much more than a mud creek. That's what it was. Uh, there were times that the water was high and flowed good, but most of the time uh, it was just a small creek. and It was kind of muddy and dirty. And, and Naaman gets this message from, uh, from Elisha, and he says, I'm supposed to go to that creek and dip myself seven times? And I'm sure he's probably thinking, I've already got a disease. I don't need another disease from that river. Uh, he says, listen, I've got other rivers back where I come from. There are beautiful rivers. There are pretty rivers. There are clean rivers. How, why can't I just go dip myself in those rivers? But the issue was obedience. The issue was this is what the Lord had spoken through the prophet Elisha. And he is calling us to obedience. That's what obedience is. Obedience for us is submission to the Father. Obedience for us is the idea that we should say yes to him regardless of what he asks us to do. So my question for us this morning is this. What, what is the Lord maybe asking you to be obedient in today? Um, maybe for you, you've never taken the next step of your faith. Maybe you've believed in God for a long time. Maybe you have never made the decision to be baptized, to be washed, right, cleansed. Um, maybe that's your decision. Maybe that's your step of obedience. Uh, maybe for you, your step of obedience would be repentance. Maybe there's some sin that you're holding on to, or maybe there's some uh, addiction that maybe has got you uh, wrapped up in, and you know you need to repent of that. What's that step of obedience that God has called you to? Maybe for you, it's the idea that he is asking you to invite that neighbor uh, to church. Maybe for you, it's this the simple gesture of inviting a family over for dinner and blessing them with a good meal and good conversation and teaching them about the good news of Jesus. What What is that step of obedience that you need to take today? Um, you know, most time we think, oh, obedience is such a big thing and we're looking for big things to be obedient and but what about the small things? What about the little things that we should be obedient in? Um, what about the kind word that maybe you're prompted by the Holy Spirit to, to say to someone? What about that encouraging note that you could write to someone? What about just going and seeing someone and visiting them? What is the small little steps of obedience that God is prompting you to do that you can make a huge difference in someone's life today? That's what Naaman's friends, uh, his, his uh, counterparts told him. Those people who were with him, his servants, when Naaman got so upset because it wasn't the word he wanted, Naaman runs off in a rage. They go get him and said, Naaman, here's the deal. Why are you making such a big deal about this? If the prophet, they said, if the prophet had told you to do some really big extravagant thing, you would have done that. But you're arguing about something small like going and washing yourself in a creek. And the idea there, I think, 
for us, especially in our own life, is so often we look for the big things that God maybe wants us to do. And there might be some big things that God has planned for you. But what about the small things that lead up to that? What are the small daily steps of obedience that we can take where we say yes to God and honor Him? Um, the Lord says, if you are faithful in a little, I will give you much. And so I would just be encouraging to you to be faithful in the little things, obedient where God has planted you, uh, regardless of whether it makes sense or not to you. Let's pray. God, thank you for being our God. Thank you for being with us today, God, in your word. Thank you for the story of Naaman. Thank you, God, for his servants and the uh, just the wise words that they chose to speak over his life. And uh, I pray, God, that we would be um, obedient as well. That even when it doesn't make sense, even when it goes counter to what we believe, even when we are fearful, God, that we would be obedient to you and step out in faith and trust you, God. That our confidence will be in you and that our faith will be demonstrated by what we do in our life. We love you, God. Bless us. And I pray that by being obedient, we're a blessing to others as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, we hope you have a great day. Uh, be an encouragement to somebody else. And we will see you tomorrow morning back in here for another devotion at 9 a.m. Or join us tomorrow morning at Eustis Elementary School and serve some pancakes. And if we have enough, you can even have some too. All right, God bless.